Hey guys, after posting this uh, video on how to create um, a walk cycle, I was asked a question and the question is, Hey brother, can you please make a video on how to move the character forward in a walk cycle and a run cycle? So uh, thanks for this question and that is coming from Ishan Photography um, 876. And uh, so let's go ahead and jump back into Maya. And this is where I left off uh, yesterday, right? So I did a couple tiny tweaks. Um, one of them being, I made sure that the character is leaning left and right, kind of about the same uh, distance. And then the other thing that I felt that uh, I could have made better yesterday is uh, raise his knees a little bit higher. And I felt like uh, maybe that actually made the walk uh, a little bit better as well, just a little more, uh, louder and a little more animated right um and then the last thing that i uh, that i uh, did a little touch up on my end as you could see his head is also kind of turning left and um right as well in addition to his body going swaying um, left and right so all of those little things are so important to make the walk cycle um work and look nice and uh, again i'm just going to keep saying it you know once you do your animation it's a really great idea to take uh to step away even for a day even and just come back and then uh, continue because then you'll start seeing things that maybe you missed you know that um, time when you're actually putting it together but anyways to to address the question the question was how do you uh once you make the walk cycle how do you advance this character uh forward so normally you know you would use a locator right or something like that but in this case uh this character specifically this rig already comes with a kind of a base um controller right and this is going to be called a world controller and so the um for anyone who is relatively new um it's it's really simple all you need to do is literally just move the um, base controller forward and that's going to create the animation so it's really uh that simple so in this case if i just select this guy by itself and go to frame 36 i can just uh literally just take it and just move it forward just like that. That's all there's to it. And now if I play the animation, you can see that he is uh, kind of sliding forward, right? And obviously I moved him way too much. So let me pull him back a little bit. And uh, now it's just a matter of tweaking it and finding, you know, what is the actual distance, right? So the feet don't look like they're sliding. Now let's uh, make this a little more advanced, right? Instead of uh, doing that, what happens if we want to really extend this a lot? What if we want to go to like, let's go to like frame 150. And let's say we want him to, uh, holding down the shift key, I can click on this uh, key here. I'm just going to literally drag it to 150, okay? And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to, um, let me grab my selection here. If I select this, and then again, I'm on, on 150, press W. What if I want him to really travel a lot, like a long distance, right? Very long distance. How do I uh, deal with that? Well, check this out. If I press play, right, he's going to start walking, but then he's going to stop walking, obviously, because the uh, animation cycle is going to end. And there's two things we need to address. Uh, let's address them now. One of them being if I select this controller and go to my graph editor, you can see by default Maya, uh, because we, we're doing literally the entire project and kind of a auto tangent. Maya is going to by default uh, create this kind of a ease out and then ease in uh, curve. Uh, we don't want that. For somebody to travel from one point to another, right, we want to make sure that this is linear. So I'm going to click on this button here to make it linear. And you can see how the curve actually changed. Now, if I go back to um, zero and press play he stops walking but um, he is moving at the same rate right so that is really important for us to understand and tweak okay so that's step one uh, step two is going to be selecting everything right so selecting all the controllers and maybe the one that we don't want to select is I'm going to hold down shift and deselect the uh, bottom world controller so essentially I just selected all the other ones and if I look in the graph editor, you can see there's a lot of stuff going on. And all of these controllers have uh, keyframes that we set, right? And you can see that in the graph editor. So what, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to my uh, graph editor. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click on this button right here called Post Infinity Cycle. Once I click on that, you can see there's like a little faded representation of this being looped. 
which means if I go back to zero and press play, he's going to continuously walk now the entire time, regardless of how long I make this. I can make this, you know, 20 minutes long, right? And he's going to keep doing it because now it's literally a post infinity cycle loop, endless loop, right? So that's really cool. Um, one of the things you're going to obviously notice is that my timing is completely off. And for something like that, there's really no way around it. You have to move the controller manually to kind of make sure that the feet don't uh, slide around, right? Um, so if we look at my um, character, you can see that he's sliding. That means he's walking way too fast, right? Which means I pushed him too far. So if I move them a little closer, go back and press play, you can see that that's much, much better. And now I would even say maybe it's a little bit too slow. So it's just doing that, right? It's just figuring out what makes sense. All right, so now you can see that the feet look much better. And that is a little bit better as far as the timing goes. All right, so a couple things I wanna bring up to your attention. One, right now I am moving him through uh, space in Maya, but we created initially him as a game character, which means um, if you bring him into a game engine, right? Any game engine, the uh, game engine using the code would actually create the uh, movement forward using usually the key so usually with the keyboard is how you would control you know the movement of the character so the speed and all of that so you know this is just strictly for animation in maya um, if it's again if it's done in game it would be moved with various controllers all right so that's cool um, what happens if we want to set him on a specific path maybe we're making uh, some kind of a short film and we want him to walk through this you know um, a terrain and in a very specific way instead of a linear uh, fashion how would we do that so let me select this and let me uh, actually delete this the entire animation so i'm going to go to uh, zero and i'm going to press delete right so now if i press play he's just going to be looping in place how do i set him on a path right so let's do that um, to do that, I'm going to go to curves. I'm going to grab this EP curve, right? And let me just create a uh, path for him to follow. So maybe, maybe I want him to uh, walk in this kind of a strange circle, right? And if I wanted to uh, change any of these, of course I could do that. Let me maybe make it a little bit better. I select this one, just press delete. And, you know, I can clean this up and make it smoother, right? If I want to. But let's say, uh, um, you know, whatever the path is, maybe this is the custom path for my guy. How do I get uh, him to walk on it, right? Well, to do that, all I need to do is just select that con the ground controller, hold on the shift key, select the uh, EP curve that I just created. Then I'm gonna go to animation, constrain, motion path, and I'm gonna do attach to motion path. And I'm gonna simply click. Now, once I click on it, you can see a few things happen, right? He did attach himself to the motion path and uh, he is facing the wrong way. So what I could do is I can go to the attribute editor and in here I have a node called motion path, right? So I have a few options here. One of them being inverse front. If I uncheck that, you can see that's actually gonna flip them the other way. And if you have any other issues, if your character is upside down or left or right, you have full control over that. So you can do that here. Now, another thing we can see in our graph editor is that the curve of the motion path um, has been uh, has been created, but it, again, it's not a linear one. So I'm going to select this and I'm going to make it linear. All right. Now, if I press play, my character is going to very quickly go around the path. So that's cool. Um, now I just need to simply slow him down. How do I do that? Well, if I select I my... need to obviously make sure that that controller is selected, the ground one, and the current animation is at 150. Let's go ahead and make it this a lot longer. Let's make this a thousand, right? And I, cur I can't currently see it in my timeline. So for me to see the uh, red line in the timeline, I could always go to my channel box, click on motion path, and now I can see the line is right there, right? I'm gonna literally just uh, hold down the shift key, make a selection and move it all the way down to 1000. All right, now if I go back to zero and press play, my character is going to walk around the line uh, or around the path much slower, right? And again, you can see how his feet are sliding a little bit, which means uh, he's still walking a little bit too fast. Let's go to 1200, 
do the same thing, select this keyframe and just drag it to um, almost 1200, go back to zero, press play. And there you have it. So now he is kind of walking at a much better um, speed. And at this point, you can do a lot of fun things like, uh, you know, if this is an animation in Maya, we can always uh, drop a and camera. I'm just gonna say create cameras and drop a camera right in. Uh, let me scale it up. If you don't see the camera, just go to show uh, viewport, make sure it's turned on right here. And what I can do now is I can just press W, uh, get it into some kind of an interesting uh, position, right? And then let's look through the camera. So we can go to camera one and let's just um, kind of get our character into focus there. Okay, All right, very, very cool. cool. Now what we could do is we can animate this camera just for fun, right? We can go to zero, press S. And as the character maybe passes us, um, we can press S and just look back and see, uh, you know, take a look at him passing us. So right here, maybe I want to move the camera over. Just kind of create our own little animation. And then he walks away. And maybe as he's walking around here, let's press S. And then right here, I can move the camera um, over again. And then right here, let's just keep following him along. Just kind of having fun now with the cameras, right? We'll do something like that. And then let's do one more here, right? And if we want to do like closer, closer shot, we can press F and maybe do like a close up on his face. All right, very cool. So now if I uh, select my camera again, you can see I set all of these keys and all of these tangents are kind of uh, auto tangents. But if I wanted to, I can select them and change them to a uh, spline, for example. And you can see how maybe that will be a little uh, smoother, right? Now, if I go back and press play, I have kind of this custom camera animation that looks horrible, but you get the idea, right? I just want to show you how you can control the cameras and animate them in fun, beautiful, cinematic ways, right? All right, and I think we can do uh, just a little bit better, right? Let's do this, and then when he goes here... Um, by the way, if you want to jump into an existing keyframe, all you need to do is just click on this button here. You can see there's these red lines, and that's going to allow you to jump between keyframes. Let's say I want to jump to this one. Let's actually select his uh, shell and press F, and I'm going to go right, kind of right behind him. Let's go back to our camera. And now I'll click, I'll jump on the next one. And that's gonna be, okay, that one is really far away. Let's do the same thing. Let me select the shell, press F. And maybe I wanna zoom in a little bit closer, go back to my camera and let me jump to the next shot. Next shot, he's zoomed out. Uh, you know, I'm gonna actually delete this one. I don't like that one. So from here, what's the next one? Then we have something like this. All right, let's 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 see what that looks like. So here, the, it's kind of neat, right? It's, the camera is following him on his adventure. All right, so um, again, this is a lot of fun. And the reason I'm showing you all of this is because the cameras add so much life in addition to the animation, right? The cameras themselves are also, think of them are almost as characters. And the way you position your camera, the way you shoot your shot, uh, you know all of this, but it's gonna create a completely different uh, effect, right? You can add shaky cameras, you can change the uh, point of view, right, on the camera. So for example, if I go to this uh, frame shot zero, um, you have focal length, right? Right now it's set to 35. If I select this and start dragging it around, you can see I can create really awesome different effects, right? Maybe I want to start, uh, you know, on 15, right? And you can see the keys already set. So then it's going to start on 15, but then by the time it gets to 180, it's going to go back to focal length of 35. So check this out. So if I press stop right here, you can see that it's actually went to 35, right? So the, you can even animate focal length uh, in the cameras as well. All right, I'll end the uh, exercise here. At this point, I'm just having fun and playing, but thank you for watching and I'll see you in our next video.